a classical illusion that has been uh, published in 1998 by two Americans, Bart Wienig and, and, and Cohen, two American uh, neuroscientists, is the rubber hand illusion. The rubber hand illusion consists in placing, um, let's say, one's left arm out of sight, out of vision, and placing in front of the eyes of the subject uh, a hand uh, in plastic, a rubber hand. And then the experimenter will stroke, let's say, the left uh, the index finger of my left hand and at the same time the ind left index finger of the, of the rubber hand. And if he does this synchronously for a minute, up to two minutes, certain subjects, two-thirds of all subjects, will start experiencing this hand for some moments as if it were belonging to their body. So this is one way and this is normally um, um, investigated by questionnaires, so the subject will be asked a certain number of questions to respond to. And then there is a second measure, which is in my opinion even more interesting, because if you then after these two minutes of stroking, we'll close the eyes of the subject and ask them, well now point to where your hand would really be. They do not point with eyes closed to the real arm, they will point towards the rubber arm. I really felt that my hand was transposed and into that uh, false hand that was presented in front of me. The feeling was really an, an awkward feeling, a very strange feeling of having a false hand belonging to me. We see, we visually see that the hand is false, but we can't uh, separate that from the fact that we actually feel our hand uh, in that place. By simultaneously stimulating fake rubber hand and the real hand, something that is felt and something that is seen on a hand is integrated. In normal, under normal conditions, um, when I see something close to a hand and I feel touched at the same position, this is always on my hand, at least I guess in 99% of all cases. So by disintegrating these two types of information, the experimental psychologist interferes with own br those brain mechanisms that we have through phylogeny but also through our own development learned, that our brain has learned to, to fuse together.